Hi, this is Heather here with Treasured Hometown. I'm coming today. I want to show you how to make some of these lovely little hanging baskets. Uh -huh. They are easily used. You can make them with all different weights of yarn. Uh, this one here, this was a number five weight uh, bulky yarn. This one is a number four weight bulky yarn and or number four weight yarn. This was an acrylic and this one was made with a number three weight yarn. So as you can see, different weight yarns uh, change for different sizes of each item. Uh, it can be easily uh, changed up to do various different sizes for all the different si types of, you know, sizes you want. This one was made slightly deeper by simply increasing um, our repeat rows. So it was able to hang and hold a little bit more. Here is just a little basic one uh, for hanging. All right, but for today, I am going to make one with you. Um, it's going to be, first supply that we're gonna need is our yarn. I chose to make one out of this Premier Puzzle. It's an acrylic yarn. Uh, the color for this one is Tangram and it is a number five weight. So for a number five weight, we also will need a crochet hook. So for that weight, we're going to use, I find best is the five and a half millimeter hook for it. If you're not comfortable with that size, um, by all means, you can change up for a different one. How I crochet, it's uh, a little bit more easier for me to fit right to that hook. You are also going to need a pair of scissors in order to cut your yarn. Uh, some darning needles in order to weave in all of your ends. And you will also need a simple marker. This is so, um, just because we're working in rounds, if you need to pause, walk away, you can keep track easily of where the round is because for the most part it works in one continuous circle. So let's begin. To start, we want to take our yarn and we want to make a magic circle. So for that, take our yarn, create a little circle. This end over the top, take our hook, go under the loop, pull up a loop, of the yarn and then do a slip stitch in order to secure that one. Now going forward what we want to do is we're going to single crochet 10 times into the circle. So for a single crochet into the circle, pull up a loop and pull through your two loops. So we would just want to do 10 of those. Now we have 10 single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and now what we're gonna wanna do is pull the tail end to bring it all together. You know, you gotta watch, sometimes it likes to loop in on itself. And then what we're gonna wanna do is going right from here into our first stitch, we want to do two double crochets into that first stitch. So for a double crochet, yarn over, go through your loops, pull up a loop. Now you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through. So you have our double crochet and we'll want to do a second double crochet into that same spot. Now, so we don't lose our spot, 
I like to put it in the first stitch of the row, so that first double crochet stitch. Just go ahead and set our marker right into there, just to keep track. And then we want to continue all the way around with two double crochets per stitch. And then we have two double crochets per stitch uh, into our single crochet. So our first row was uh, 10 single crochets. And now we had two double crochets per uh, single crochet stitch. So now we're at 20 stitches for that row. Now we'll go ahead and pull our marker because we're at the stitch right before the first one. And into that first stitch, we want to put two double crochets. And before we get too far away, that first double crochet we just made, go ahead and replace our marker right there. Now, for the next, we just did our first two double crochets into one stitch. So our next stitch, we want to do a double crochet, just one. And then we want to do two double crochets and then one double crochet into the stitch next to it. And we just want to alternate that around the entire piece. One, two, one, one, two, into that same, next one, a single, Now that we finished that round. So our first row had 10, next row had 20. This one has 30 stitches. So continuing right to that circle, we want to pull our marker out and we want to put two double crochets into that first stitch. Now we want to go ahead and put our marker right back into that first double crochet into those that one stitch and then we want to do kind of like the last row but we want to do two double crochets into one stitch and then a double crochet into the next two stitches and just repeat that all the way around so we did two and then one two and then two into this one And then one into the next two.
All right, now we've finished that round. So this latest round, that one will actually have 40 stitches all together into it. So continuing around to our next round of it, we want to, this first stitch, do two double crochets. And go ahead and put your marker right back into that first stitch, first double crochet of it. And then, kind of like the last one, but we want to do two double crochets and then three uh, double crochets into the next, and then followed by two double crochets and then three double crochets uh, into each. So um, one way I find that it's best to remember that, uh, for me, I know there's three and then two. So if I remember the first two, go into one, so I count one, two, and then three, four, five. So I remember, you know, to count to five, but always one and two go into the same stitch. Just a little trick I use to help me keep track of where I'm at, so I'm not having to go back and recount everything. Now that we've finished that round, uh, so that round you would have completed 50 stitches all together. Now for our next round, we want to once again do two double crochets into our first stitch. And then put our marker back so we can keep track of where our repeats. And then for this one, two double crochets into one stitch, and then it is four double crochets into each next stitch. So, two, three, four, and then two into the next, and then one double crochet in the remaining four. Now that we've finished that row, there should be 60 stitches throughout here. 
Alright, now I'm going to pull this uh, marker out and just do one double crochet into that first stitch. And go ahead and put our marker right back into that first stitch. And then for this round, we want to do just one double crochet into each stitch around. So 60 double crochets. Now that we've just finished that row, now as you can see, it's kind of bowing up because we had, didn't do any increases. Now this uh, kind of makes the sides of the body of the bag. Um, it's where we create our depth. Like this one will just be basically it'll lay kind of flat. Um, or you can alter it. I'll show you. We just repeat this one. Normally we'll just did that row of single crochets. And then we do another row of single cro or double crochet into each stitch all the way around. Um, you can make it a deeper bag like this one. Um, this is just for an example. I have much larger bags where I actually did um, two pieces of number four weight yarn uh, crocheted together, made them very deep, uh, kind of like a laundry basket. So this is just how we create the depth of our bag. I just want to take a second to show you. All right, now that we did that one row of double crochets into each, pull our marker and go ahead and do another double crochet into that first stitch. Replace our marker into the double crochet we just made. And we want to go ahead and double crochet all the way around again. So that's 60 stitches. We've done our two rows of one double crochet into each stitch. So from here, going forward, I'm going to pull off our little marker and we want to single crochet into this next stitch. Go ahead and put our marker back on there so we don't lose our spot. And we want to do a total of 15 single crochets. We just did our one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, and 15. So now we've got 15 total single crochets done. Now we want to double crochet into the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now, what we want to do is double crochet decrease 10 times or double crochet two together. So we want to go into our yarn over, go into our next stitch, pull up a loop, pull yarn over and pull through your first two loops. Normally to complete a double crochet, we'd yarn over and pull through, but we're not going to do that for this one. We want to go yarn over, pull up another loop, Yarn over, pull through your first two. So now you have the starts of two double crochets and three loops on your hook. Pull through all three loops. That 
is double crochet decrease, also known, I've heard it, as double crochet two together. And we want to go ahead and do that ten times. So that's one, two, three, four, Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now, just you know, quick little double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, into our next five stitches, we want to double crochet into each stitch. Two, three, four, five, and then. We want to go ahead and single crochet into the next 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. Now if we set our thing down, you can see it's starting to kind of curve inward more, so it's like we're making that the belly of the bag into there. For our next row, what we're going to do, pull our little marker out, and put a single crochet into that stitch, and then go ahead and put our marker back in. Okay, now for this row, we want to do 15 single crochets. So we just did our one. So we want to do one or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, and 15. All right, we have 15 single crochets. And now we want to double crochet into the next four stitches. So one, two, three, four, and then we want to double crochet decrease six times. So we got one, one, two, and three. Four, five, and six. And then we want to double crochet into the next four stitches. Two, three, and Four. And then we want to single crochet into the next 15 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right, we have that row. It's kind of pulling it all in with our decreases, so it creates a little pouch into there. Now we can go ahead, remove our marker, and we just want to put a slip stitch right into there. And then go ahead and put our marker into that stitch also. All right, just like that. And then what we want to do is slip stitch all the way around. Okay, so put our one slip stitch, two, three, four. All right, now we're back at our first stitch, so we'll go ahead and remove the marker. I want to slip stitch one more time right into that first stitch. Now here, I like to go ahead and turn my work inside out. And from here, we're going to chain 16. then we're going to go ahead and slip stitch right into the stitch right next to it to join that. I'm going to turn it and what we want to do, that creates the low loop for the handle. So what we're going to want to do is single crochet into the loop 22 times. So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 16, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, now we've got 22 single crochets around the loop that we made. Now we'll go ahead and slip stitch this right into a little spot in the base just to adhere that. Now we want a nice big length of yarn. I usually say go for probably about three feet or so. Cut your yarn and pull it through that slip stitch. All right, then what we're gonna do is simply wrap our yarn right around the base there. That gives it the nice little poop ball look right onto it. And then we're going to take one of our darning needles and go ahead and weave in that end. I don't know about everyone else, but I am terrible at trying to get yarn into a darning needle. So I have a little uh, threader for it. And then we just take our needle and we go through the bundle. 
back, go through the bundle of yarn, we're just going to repeat that a few times, make sure it's nice and secure. Now it is possible to go ahead and, you know, weave in the ends without a darning needle. I have done it in the past before I ever had any darning needles, but it makes it just a bit easier <clears throat> in order to weave them all in. Well, we still have this tail. You also need to go ahead and weave in that end. But essentially, yes, you are all done. Go ahead and fill them up with whatever you want. Like I said, during the pattern, if you want to make it a deeper bag where we did our just simple double crochet all the way around, add more uh, rows to that one. And that gives you, you know, something deeper. Uh, kind of like this one. Um, I actually use this one for uh, like its batteries and whatnot. Whenever I hold inside of my little camper, you know, toss all your batteries in there. Hangs from a nice little hook. Um, command hooks are good for those too. I actually have screw in their like a screw hook. <laughs> um, not sure the exact name, but yeah. So that goes ahead and does that. Different weight yarns for, you know, create a different size onto it. Like that one was a number three. This is a number five. Um, I've gone, you know, number six weight yarn. I've done number four weight yarn. And I've also done for making these bags where I've crocheted two number four weights together. Creates a fun little intricate pattern onto those ones. Um, I also have... Um, if you enjoyed this, I do have the PDF version of the pattern available inside of my Etsy store. Um, it is for sale. Um, you, I'll actually post the link for it in the description if you'd like to get a PDF with uh, pictures of step-by-step. -step. <clears throat> it even goes through and tells you which size the recommended hook size for each different yarn, depending on the weight that you want to make off of it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share. If you'd like to continue getting a free pattern every week, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day.